Hello and welcome to episode four, A New Hope. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, welcome to episode four of the Motivational Millennial Podcast. We're talking today with Lauren Burgoyne, who's the founder of the Greater Purpose Project. Uh, awesome interview. Really excited to share with you Lauren's focus on superheroes, on how we can all be heroes in our own lives and support others who are being heroes. I connected with Lauren in part because of our shared uh, superhero-themed motivational assembly work in schools, and I think you're really going to enjoy the talk today. Stick around afterwards. We have an after show where Ivy and I share a few thoughts and reflections on the interview with Lauren, and we're excited for you to hear the show. Woohoo! Hello, welcome to the Motivational Millennial Podcast, where we discuss living life with a sense of purpose with members of the millennial generation who are doing just that. I'm Blake Brandis. And I'm Ivy LeClaire. Our Motivational Millennial guest today is Lauren Begoin. Lauren is a broadcast journalist, TV host, speaker, and writer. She's the founder of the Greater Purpose Project and the executive producer of Greater Purpose Productions. Lauren has produced multiple shows for television and the web, has worked as an on-air reporter, anchor, and producer at TV stations in Arizona, Wisconsin, and Missouri, and was awarded Best Spot News by the Associated Press. In addition to her work, she loves fantasy football, hanging with friends and fam, salsa dancing, hiking, traveling, her cat Bella Puss, and being an aspiring yogi. Lauren, welcome to the show. Hey guys, thanks for having me. I'm pumped. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, before we jump into what gives you your sense of purpose, we'd just like to talk a little bit about what gets you motivated. And we're going to kick that off with the first question, which is, what is your jam? You know, that song that gets you moving and pumped up. I have a lot, but um, I would say right now, I mean, as a, as a writer, you know, depending on what's going on in my life, different different music speaks to me. But right now, Everlong by the Foo Fighters. Uh, I'm pretty much live in concert anytime I'm driving my car. So, <laughs> yes, if you roll up next to me at a stoplight and Dave Grohl is wailing, my drum solo to that song is pretty off the hook. <laughs> just, I mean, there's just something about his energy that, you know, that gets me moving. And, uh, you know, the fact he performed a few weeks ago and broke his leg during a live show and continued performing it just, you know, his passion just blows me away. Yeah, that's dedication there. Yeah. Wow. The yes. consummate rock star. I love it. Um, yes. So speaking of getting moving, what do you do when you wake up in the morning to ensure you are going to have a great day? Okay, so on the ideal day uh, that all is right in the universe, um, <laughs> you know, I wake up, I, I get my coffee going, you know, I, I drink it out of my signature cowboy boot mug. <laughs> and uh, douse it, douse it with a lot of whipped cream, you know, to really get, you know, the, the positivity flowing. I, I'm jamming, you know, I, I've got my tunes blasting and whether I'm, I'm listening to the Foo Fighters or Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch on my Pandora, I mean, <laughs> I am singing, I am dancing, I am just kind of getting the energy flowing, getting focused for the day. I really try to take time to write in my gratitude and prayer journal. So I'm writing about things that I am grateful for, and I'm writing about prayers for other people as well as prayers for guidance in my own life that day that I am, you know, serving God's purpose in the way he intended. And that really, yeah, it really, really helps keep me focused and, and keeps me positive. I'll also on a, a great day, if I can talk to, you know, any member of my family, they really get me going. Or if I have one of those meaningful conversations with a mentor in my life, those are great. And anytime I can be outside in nature. So if I'm able to, to grab a quick run in the morning, get blasting in my headphones that way. It's, it's a good day. It's a great day. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, we'd love to know, um, what is a motivational quote or phrase that has changed your life? The one that sticks out that really, you know, has really carried me over, I would say, for, for some time now is from my historical crush, Benjamin Franklin. Um, <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Either write something worth reading or do something worth writing. And I, I just think it's so true. We all have 24 hours in the day. What are you doing with them? 
what am I doing with them? <laughs> yeah. you no, know? I mean, are you growing? Are you learning? Are you stepping out of your comfort zone? When something goes wrong, you know, can you laugh at it? Can you share your experience with others? You know, how much time, th- this goes for myself too. You know, I'm constantly trying to grow and evolve. And, you know, how much time am I spending in my phone? And if I'm in my phone, what am I doing that's productive? You know, I want <laughs> being, you know, a creative type, being a writer and a, a producer, I want the core of my work to make you think, make you laugh, make you hope, or inspire you to do something positive, you know, give you, give you the goosebumps about sharing other people's stories of overcoming adversity. You know, I I really think it's just a matter of, are you using your gifts properly? And I hope you guys don't kill me. I'm going to follow that quote up with another quote. Yeah, go for it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Margaret Med said, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world or indeed that's all who ever have. And I, I can't tell you the exact date that I, you know, that I heard that or stumbled across it, but it was just reminding myself that yes, you're not crazy. It's the crazy ones that get things done, you know, that dare to dream and, and dare to make the world better. And You certainly hear people in your life who come and go and and want to give you advice. And I think sometimes the best advice is just follow your gut, follow your heart, because you can make a difference and you can do what you feel you were you were meant to do more than anyone else. That's really powerful. And I think those two quotes actually work together because I think, you know, the Benjamin Franklin quote, part of that is taking a step outside yourself and looking at if, if someone were to write the story of your life, what would they say about it? And I think in moments of stress or crisis, that can be really powerful to say, okay, yes, I'm in the midst of this right now, but if I were looking at this from the outside or writing about it five years from now, what would I want to say that I did in this situation or which choice did I make? And I think sometimes that can help us um, release some of that pressure of having to be perfect or having to always be right and to really let that caring self that you talked about in the second quote, let that shine through and say, you know what, I want to be the person who cares. I want to be the person who's committed to making that positive change. So I love those two quotes. I think they work great together. Well, thank you. I, uh, I'm just re-quoting. <laughs> no, I mean, it, there's just there's, there's so many positive affirmations out there, you know? And I, I also believe, too, you know, the, the more you affirm yourself, the more you recognize yourself with these positive leaders and surround yourself with these quotes. I mean, put post-it notes up all over your bathroom mm-hmm. mirror. I mean, it just, it's a positive way to remind yourself of, of what you're supposed to be doing or what you want to be doing. Have you ever uh, thrown any post-it notes up on your mirror? Oh, oh, I am. Yes, I am full of post-it notes. Yes. And my phone, <laughs> uh, as a writer, as a blogger, I'm one of those people who's constantly like, you know, my phone is to my mouth, not because I'm, I'm, talking to people, you know, like walkie talkie style, but although that is cool, (laughs) you know, I'm taking notes about people that I'm, you know, running into the the elderly man at the coffee shop who's befriended me, or I work a lot with kids and kids are just, as you guys know, I mean, Blake, hello, you and I are kindred spirits here. We work a lot with children and they're just full of profound insight and hilarity and material, you know, so I am, I'm constantly making notes in my phone about other people that I meet and and stories about them that I want to tell. I just, I can't help myself. I just, you know, I'm a storyteller. I want to, I want to tell them all. Awesome. Well, speaking of stories to tell, we would love to hear a story about a defining moment in your life that helped you realize your sense of purpose. Yes. Thank you, Blake and Ivy, for, for asking that question. I've been thinking about this, and I'll start with this. I believe that when tragedy strikes, you have two options. A, surrender, or B, survive. And then there are those people who decide that those options aren't good enough. So they invent option C, which is turn your pain into a catalyst for greatness. These are the people who I believe should be walking around wearing capes, or I really think they're the true superheroes. You know, they have this ability to transform adversity into a positive source of energy and inspiration. And I've always been drawn to these folks. 
I knew when I first started out as a rookie journalist, these were the stories that lit me up inside. These were the stories that people would come up to me on the street and say, hey, I, I saw that story about, you know, the person you profiled last night and, and I either it's A, I want to help them or B, they inspired me to do something like that. Those are the moments that stuck with you. You know, I've certainly had times in my career that, you know, I was maybe bummed out that a live shot didn't go well or uh, as a starting journalist, I'd take a look at my, my bank statement and... <laughs> Oh, it was, I was kind of getting a little, little down on it. Didn't know if, is this really what I'm, what I'm supposed to be doing? And then I would meet, you know, a Bennett Jones or a Patrick Taylor. Bennett Jones was a young man I met when he was 16 years old and bald headed from his chemotherapy. He was a rock star battling cancer. I'm happy to say that Bennett is still alive and, and well today. But during that time, he was really sick and he was missing out on school and his friends, but he never found the time to feel sorry for himself because he was too busy masterminding a rock concert that he called Kick Cancer Where It Counts. And <laughs> that's awesome. And that concert benefited the pediatric unit he was being treated in so that the future patients coming to stay there would be more comfortable. And, you know, these people would, would come into my life and, and it was like, hello, you know, God hitting me over the head, like tell their story. You know, this is, this is meaningful. Um, you know, the seed had been planted during that time, but I hadn't quite envisioned the garden yet. So uh, if we we're to fast forward the clock, I was working as a reporter at the uh, CBS affiliate in Tucson, Arizona, and I was doing a, a live shot at 5 a.m., you know, which was pretty pretty typical. This time I was calling on the public to come and, and donate food items for, you know, a food drive. And I had seen a man, you know, he was, he was wheeling up to me at this event and he was, you know, it was one of those scenes. He was coming, coming in the sunrise and he was in his wheelchair and, and he had brought a toy for the drive and he had a big gregarious personality and he was talking to everybody there and turned out he was, you know, a, a former firefighter on his workout ride. And I thought, hey, you know, that's, that's a really cool guy. I was very impressed by him. And a week later, sure enough, I'm doing another live shot in the morning and at 5 a.m. again. And, and this time I see a man wheeling towards me and he has this red, bright red fire truck on his lap. And this, you know, the pinks and the oranges and the yellows are rising in the distance. And he's, he's wheeling at me and oh my goodness, it's this same firefighter. And this morning, the drive I was doing was uh, collecting toys for an orphanage. That's what our station was sponsoring. And he said, Hey, you know, it's me, it's, it's Patrick Taylor. And I, I came to, came to help. And I thought, okay, there's, there's a story here, you know, uh, who, who are you? So I came to learn that Patrick was battling stage four multiple sclerosis. And at that time he didn't know, but he had Parkinson's as well. And he was training for the Paralympics. He was out on a 14 mile ride. And, and I thought, you know what, this is, this is the story I want to tell. And I knew that I was leaving Tucson um, on my own accord to move up to Phoenix. And at that time, I thought, yeah, that's the last story I want to tell here. That's the story I want to be remembered by. Well, fast forward the clock, and it's a couple years past. I had done, you know, my own travel entertainment show, Destination Arizona, here out in Phoenix. And during that time, I had become very close with Patrick and his wife. I looked at him like an older brother figure. He was about, you know, 20, 25 years older than me. And like so many people who allow me to come into their life, they become a part of my life and a part of my family. And I always knew I wanted to do something more with Patrick's story. But it was one of those things that I felt like I didn't have the money to do it. I didn't have the time to do it. I was working all these other jobs and, and trying to keep my head afloat that I knew that's what I wanted to do. I just didn't know how I was going to be able to pull it off. And I got a call a couple of years ago in the spring from Patrick's wife, Kathy. And she had told me that Patrick had just gotten out of the hospital. He had double pneumonia, which I 
at the time, I didn't even know what that was. And he was very sick upon coming home. And there was a MS ride in Tucson, MS ride walk fundraiser that following Saturday. And against his doctor's judgment and against his wife's advice, Patrick, being a very stubborn man, said, you know what, I, I need to be out there at this walk. I, I feel like it's what I, I need to do. Mind you, he, he could barely wheel a block in his wheelchair. And he certainly was, you know, 20 to 30 pounds less than what I had remembered seeing him. Well, Kathy told me this news and I knew in my gut, I have to be there to document this ride. And of course, it was one of those weeks. I didn't have a crew to do it. I didn't have, you know, uh, the support I thought I needed to get down there to Tucson. Um, And I thought, you know what, I I prayed on it. You know, I was worried at the time that things weren't working out. I didn't have a crew. I didn't have my guys. And so I had prayed on it and said, God, if you want me there, you know, bring me down to Tucson. Let this work out. And sure enough, the stars align as they sometimes do. And my photographers became available and I got the call and they said, hey, we're picking you up tomorrow. 4 a.m. We're going to go down to Tucson. We surprised Patrick and we were reunited with him at his home. We actually woke him up that morning and followed him out to that ride. And I will never forget seeing him Across the finish line, he was the second to the last person, and everyone was there waiting for him, and they were cheering, and they were chanting, and it was an out-of-body experience. I felt like I was watching someone else's movie. I thought, this is the power of the human spirit. If Patrick can cross the finish line, facing so much pain, what are the rest of us doing? You know, at that moment, the greater purpose project was a living, breathing thing. And I thought, yes, I want to tell Patrick's story, but I want to tell all of the other superhero stories out there. I want to find the Patrick Taylors in the world and I want to give them a space to thrive. And that's really when I knew, all right, I'm all in the greater purpose project. It's got to happen. That's amazing. What an incredible origin story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I love what you say about the Greater Purpose Project. Like It's a person. It's people. That is so inspiring. And, and, you know, I love what you said, too. He came in second to last because it wasn't even about that. You know, it was about being there, supporting, completing. And I think that's incredibly inspirational for me. You know, just thinking about how many times in my own life do I make excuses or um, worry about what the outcome is going to be instead of just, you know, doing what you did, which was pick up and go and trust that the resources will be there when you need them. And to do what he did, which was commit to supporting something he really cared about in whatever way he could. Thank you. Yes. And I think, you know. One of his nurses I had interviewed that day, she said, you know, we, we all impose limits on ourselves. You know, I, oh, I can't, I can't go to the gym or I, I can't, I can't volunteer and do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not that type of person or, you know, I'm just, I'm too busy or, you know, I just, I can't do that. I'm not one of those people. And when you look at Patrick and you think, you know, he's, he's house, He's bound to his house. He's not able to be a firefighter anymore. He's had these things. He can't hike. He's had these things that he's loved taken away from him. And he says, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym. You know, I'm going to be the best I can be in this situation. And as a result of that, he has inspired so many people, you know? Yeah, I mean, for me, I actually have goosebumps right now from the story you just told. And uh, I'm just incredibly impressed by that. And I just love, you know, the work that you're doing with Greater Purpose Project in highlighting that, you know, our reality isn't defined by our circumstances. It's defined by our thoughts and the actions that we take based on those thoughts. You know, and it's really highlighting over and over again that, that, that it's possible to overcome that. It's possible to have a different view of yourself and work based on that view to change your life and, and to inspire others, which is really amazing. 
Yeah. I mean, these, you know, and, and when you get the conversation going, it's like, I'm sure you guys are thinking, oh, I know a person who is perfect for that. You know, I mean, we, we know these people, we come in contact with these people and, and some of the people who are really inspiring or beyond inspiring are also, you know, children. There's a boy and I'll, I'll share a, I'll try to be a quick story. I could talk about this forever, but <laughs> if you haven't, if you're not familiar yet, there's a book called chocolate bar the book and it was written by a little boy named dylan siegel and i believe he was seven or eight when he wrote it dylan was a very healthy little guy but his best friend jonah was very sick or is very sick with a a rare liver disease and um you know dylan just just told his parents and just thought i i want to help i want to do something for jonah what can i do and he was a little writer Um, you know, guy after my heart. And he wrote a book called Chocolate Bar, the book. And in the book, he uses the word chocolate bar in place of awesome or cool. So, you know, Blake and Ivy, you guys are so chocolate bar. (laughs) For the cat's pajamas, if you will. So this book, fast forward, has raised more than a million dollars and has opened up research for this rare liver disease that was not being researched until this little boy wrote this book to help his best friend. When I'm able to share stories like this and introduce people to these superheroes, it just, it's like, what can't we do? You know, I mean, anything's possible. That's absolutely right. I mean, I'm so inspired by the work you're doing. And I'm wondering, what are you excited about for the future? And how do you feel that having a sense of purpose helps you stay focused on your goals? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm pumped to get up every day and work on this. What I'm really excited about this year is we are kicking off our Greater Purpose Project School Heroes Tour, and that has been a new element, a new phase of Greater Purpose. Um, I'm being joined by Olympic ice hockey player from the U.S. women's team, silver medalist Lindsay Fry, who uh, just graduated from Harvard. She's accompanying myself and the Greater Purpose Project, and we're going into schools and we're inspiring kids to discover their inner superhero. We're encouraging them to use their talents and their differences to inspire others. And we're teaching them how to start their own greater purpose projects and introducing them to these real life superhero youth that they can be, that they are inside. And the School Heroes Tour is really what's igniting me right now is going in those schools and being inspired by these kids who are so kind and th- so thoughtful and so full of this mind-blowing energy. I'm really, really pumped about that. I love how you've got this cycle of motivation and inspiration and that you're creating those cycles through the schools, you know, through the superheroes who you're bringing in to talk to the students and then encouraging the students to do their own greater purpose projects. I think that is how transformational movements happen. You know, you give people the tools to share with others. And I love, you know, the greater purpose project is such a great platform for that, for creating these cycles that then have impact beyond what we could even dream of. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate that. And, you know, I think I'm inspired by the work you guys are doing. You know, I mean, these things are all related. You know, while everything is a a little bit different, it's all related. And, you know, I really feel that everyone as human beings, for the most part, has the same goal, you know, of just being the best you can be. And, as a byproduct, you're inspiring others to be the best they can be. And it's just, it's winning for everybody. I love that. Um, And so that's a good transitional place to sort of move us into our final segment here. Um, For those of us who are still searching for that sense of purpose and meaning, what advice could you give? You know, I think that question, if you are asking yourself that question right now, you know, what is my greater purpose? What should I be doing? Well, amen, you're halfway there. <laughs> if you're thinking already about, ah, you know, I want to do more, or I feel like I've got this 
gift, you know, I, I want to paint or I want to tell stories or I want to volunteer or use my hands or whatever it is. You know, I, I think if you're already asking yourself the question, you are halfway there. So, you know, you want to live an examined life. That's, that's the first part. The second part is find a, you know, a group of supportive people, you know, find mentors. Like you've, you've always been one of mine, you know, and, and when I get off the phone with you, I'm always like revved up to go <laughs> pee it up. So I think it's important to find those mentors, to find people who, who want to support you and, and who have done it themselves. I also think journaling is a great place to start as well. You know, I mean, write about things that happened during the day. What excited you? What made you feel happy? What people energized you? And, and write about, you know, these are the things about the day I didn't really care for. Or, you know, these are maybe some people that that I feel like are, are bringing in a negative impact in my life. I mean, we have such a short time here that it's like surround yourself with people that make you grow, make you think, challenge your beliefs, and those that support you along the way. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I really uh, appreciate you sharing about taking time to reflect. You know, journaling is is something that's definitely helped me. And I, I can say, you know, with from experience that that is something that truly helps me stay focused and gets me inspired and, and understand, you know, what I'm really um, interested in doing with my life. So wrapping up here, where can people find you and your work online? Well, I'll give you one easy web address, www.thegreaterpurposeproject.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm beyond pumped to go have a meaningful day. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you so much for being a motivational millennial, Lauren. We really appreciate you being here with us today. Me too. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. We had a great conversation with Lauren Burgoyne, and I personally was really inspired by her story about Patrick. I think for me, what it reminded me is the power of an individual to be our motivator or our driving force. I think sometimes we can feel like it has to be a giant concept or something really abstract that drives us and gives us our sense of meaning and purpose, but... As Lauren was demonstrating, sometimes it can be just that one person who we look at and we think about and we say, wow, that person inspires me. That person keeps me moving forward and focused on what's really important and what I really need to be doing. And I think that can help too because so often we can get wrapped up in what does everyone think about this? And some people aren't going to like whatever I'm doing or a project I'm working on. But having always that one person to focus on, I think – it scales it down and it says, if this person likes it, it's good. For me, I mean, it reminds me of when I began my blog and uh, a friend of mine told me that she, whenever, you know, she's feeling down, she goes on there and she reads my posts and they actually end up making her feel better. Now that I'm, whenever I'm writing them or if I'm feeling really busy and I think, oh, should I get a post written just now or should I procrastinate it, whatever, it's really thinking about her and just recognizing that, yeah, maybe we're not able to talk on the phone right now, but if something that I'm putting out there is helping my friend, then it's totally worth it, even if it's just one person. And then just knowing and having faith that it's that it's helping and inspiring other people. But that's a good point. Just that one person, you know, really keeps me motivated and focused on doing that. For sure. And change does happen one person at a time. And for me, with my motivational blog wraps, uh, similarly, I would just think, yeah, there's this one person who's always going to be reading it. And, you know, if they think that it's awesome or if it helps them in some way or, you know, if I could design a rap that will make them laugh, then that's great. And I've accomplished my goal. So, yeah, I, I really think that's awesome. Well, what I really loved, you know, and I, and I kind of mentioned it during the interview, um, is the is the emphasis on, you know, the people who sh whose stories she's sharing it's all around overcoming adversity and creating your own meaning of life and circumstances around you. And I think that that's just so powerful because, I mean, that, that's what it takes to sort of get through life in general and come out of it happier and healthier. And, you know, combining that thought with her practice of doing gratitude every day, you know, that's one of the things that can really help, you know, shift your mindset. 
you know, if you're, ha- you're having a really bad day or things are not going your way, you know, it's really helpful to think about what is great about your life. You know, she's talking about young kids who are seeing a problem. They don't feel jaded. They don't feel over it. They don't feel like, oh my gosh, I, you know, I'm looking at my newsfeed and people are talking about this and complaining about this. And so, you know, I'm feeling kind of overwhelmed and disempowered. You know, they have this spirit because they just see a problem and they just want to fix it. And that is what motivates them to move forward. And they're not thinking about, well, I'm just one kid. I'm just one person. And so, you know, somewhere in there, we start to lose that you know, a natural ability to feel that way. And so, you know, I just think that was to me one of the interesting things that she's really highlighting is people who were doing that in the worst of circumstances. One of the most powerful things is our ability to control our focus. And like you're saying, kids often will do that naturally and look for, you know, what's exciting about this? What's great about this? And I think as adults, one of the things that really can help is being intentional about those questions that we ask about any situation. Yeah. What's good about this? What's helpful about this? What's inspiring about this? Because in any situation, no matter how frustrating or upsetting or negative it may seem, there's always something that we can deliberately pull out of it. If we're looking for it, what can I be thankful about in this situation? And asking those questions can totally change our experience of any given situation. You know, I remember being in France. Um, I was studying abroad and there were no other students from my university who were there. And on one hand, I could have looked at it as it being a very isolating experience. And certainly in some ways it, it was, but I just remember asking myself, you know, what's great about this? And one of the answers I came up with was, well, this gives me an opportunity to meet a lot of new people and to interact with more French people because I'm not going to be hanging out with just my old friends from college uh, when I'm overseas. And so making a conscious decision to focus on that then inspired me to take action like finding a French uh, conversation partner who ended up being a good friend. It was hilarious. Uh, But none of that would have happened if I had just decided I was going to be sad and really dwell in the isolation of being the only person from my school there. Yeah, you know, and that's something that we can really practice daily just in, you know, moments throughout our lives. For example, you know, getting stuck in traffic or, you know, stubbing our toe or whatever, you know, taking a moment to really think about, you know, when we're stuck in traffic, what am I grateful for? I'm grateful for the the opportunity to have a vehicle. I'm grateful that I have somewhere to be going. I'm grateful that, you know, I live somewhere where there are so many people that people just love it. And that's what's creating all of this traffic, you know, so practicing that gratitude and shifting your mindset, even at the smallest things can help you whenever there are large elements of adversity that come up in your life, you know, because you've trained your mind to do that already. Sometimes I think we wish we could be in this enlightened state where we're just eternally grateful for everything and (laughs) everything's fine all the time and we don't, we're never bothered by anybody. But the reality is there are a lot of things that bother us and frustrate us and (laughs) deter us in our journey. And it's not so much about, oh, I'm the perfect person who's always grateful. I think it's becoming aware, like you're talking about, of the things we are grateful for and what we could be grateful for if we wanted to. And sometimes that's the most powerful question. If I wanted to feel grateful right now, what could I feel grateful for? And sometimes just asking that question will take us into that place of gratitude that helps us enjoy life more and really connect with our sense of purpose and our place in the world. For show notes and upcoming guests or to learn more about Coactive Coaching, the blog, and our other awesome offerings, visit MotivationalMillennial.com. Keep in touch with us at Facebook.com slash MotivationalMillennial. We'd love to hear from you. Shoot us an email with your thoughts, comments, and suggestions at podcast at motivationalmillennial.com. And tell us who you might like to hear from, or if you think you or anyone you know would be good for the show. The Motivational Millennial Podcast is edited by Christy Hostler and Team Podcast. Our theme music was composed and performed by Blake Brandis. Have Have a great great week, week, Motivational Millennials. Millennials!